Henry Louis Gates creates another masterpiece, and this time it's all about Africa. The Obama signed a huge book deal. So who's redefining sexy? YSL has some explaining to do. We also have information for what to do if ice comes knocking at your door, and much more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. I'm Courtney Rashawn. Netflix and chill. <laughs> oh, okay. Movies, television shows on Netflix will have you binge watching for the month of March. Nice. Uh, they're going to have Friday after next. Always good. Uh, the Negro Soldier. You guys know about that that movie? The no, Negro Soldier. It's a documentary. It. It's about, um, it's, it's a documentary that serves the, that was supposed to serve the propaganda. Ah, yes. For the, gotcha. um, the World War II, yes. what, what it was doing, it was like um, having black people enlist to the army. It was telling all this nonsense and it just wasn't true, so we get to see that. And right. Greenleaf, it's oh gonna my, be good. do you love yeah. Greenleaf? Yes. Oh, the it's church, awesome. I feel so bad. Mm. <laughs> okay. And then, on and on. And then right. they're going to have a couple seasons of How to Get Away with Murder. It's just going to be good this month. Nice. Lots yeah. of stuff for you to chill with. I know. But don't chill with guys. Do it by yourself, people. Thanks. I hate oh, that. God. Not Ray Ray, not wrong Ray Ray. Okay, in case you missed it, Harvard <laughs> professor Henry Louis Gates unveiled Africa's hidden figures in a new docu-series. Mm -hmm. um, it was told through analysis, interviews, and personal exploration. It's called Africa's Great Civilizations, and it's a six-hour PBS documentary series chronicling two 100,000 years of African civilization, guys. That's oh, be my amazing. God. That where, where can we see that? Where? PBS.org. Oh, nice. Can't we yeah. can watch it on. We can watch it on uh, on the net. Yeah, you can oh, watch perfect, it on the net, perfect, and it, it covers everything. I mean, he was making it for five years. Five years. I and wonder if we can share it on our social medias and stuff course. like that, so people can so, watch yeah. it. Of course, of course, share wildly. Yeah, I'm yes. sure it's a, a lot of content and goes in Shaka depth about Zulu, you know, King the beginning Lalabella, of the Christianity, great civilization of Africa. Africa. Yes, it's going to yes. be good. I can't wait to see that. Mm. So tongues are wagging about the book deal. Mr. Barack Obama and the First Lady Michelle Obama. Um, they both signed with Penguin Random House and the deal is reported to be around 60 million. Six, Whoa! Wait, 60, 6 million? 60 million. 6 zero? No. 6 zero. Yeah, 60 million. For perspective, Bill Clinton received 15 million for his uh, post presidency memoir. What was he talking about? Wow. How to Playing play the saxophone, the saxophone and smoking a little herb. <laughs> And you know, and get a blowjob. Ooh, you didn't get your go there. You were hoping we tried to get a blowjob and kept my job. Listen, gangsters. Oh my god, that's the white privilege. That's the white privilege. Well, Penguin Random House CEO Marcus Dole said in statement. Uh, quote, we are absolutely thrilled to continue our publishing partnership with President and Mrs. Obama. With their words and their leadership, they change the world. And every day with the books we publish at Penguin Random House, we strive to do the same. Now we are very much looking forward to working together with President and Mrs. Obama to make each of their books global publishing events of unprecedented scope and significance. Nice. Mm, yeah. Well, that's going to be easy to do because... Yeah. They're exciting individuals. Get they right? are. All the they inside. are. First black president. I mean, you got, you got to. It's good. And I can't, cool. I can't. Like, Very cool. Right, because yeah. black people are not always cool. Hashtag Ben, ben Carson. Carson. Be like, yeah. Yeah. Ben Carson. So I don't think it's about cool. It's about In the it. sunken place. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like Ben Carson. <laughs> Immigrants, no, he said, who immigrants who came from slavery? He said today. Oh, you didn't hear what he said? Yeah, he said it. Yeah, he said it. No, he didn't. Shame yes. on Ben Carson. All right, anyway, <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break. And so don't touch that remote. We will be right back with what's popping. So stay tuned. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. 
Welcome back to West of 411. So sexy is getting a whole new meaning. And who's redefining sexy? Millennials, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, millennial women are leading the way in redefining sexy, according to an article at Refinery29.com. And Victoria's Secret is caught in the middle. Okay. So Pauline McLaren, the professor of marketing and consumer research at Royal Holloway, University of London, says, quote, Victoria's Secret did a really good job of making sexy underwear accessible to women and tapping into the fantasy elements of femininity. They entered a market where lingerie was considered a luxury product offering and made it a mass consumer good and has arguably had a helping hand in making sexuality a mass conversation. But the problem is that the idea of what's sexy has changed. Young women want to be able to see all body types as beautiful. Mm -hmm. Is this an admiral goal? Do you agree with this notion that millennials are uh, basically seeing all body types as being beautiful? I don't know if it's all millennials. I think that there are certainly, like, as people, the new generation comes up, they do want to see reflections of themselves in what they see as sexy. So, you know, full figured, slim, skinny, everything. They want to see all of that. But there's still some millennials who struggle with body image. And it has to do with places like Victoria's Secret still showing no. the women really right. like but one size, really skinny. So there's still that some women do still struggle with that, even though they're younger. Well, I, I noticed that uh, on social media, a lot of women, full figure girls, curvy girls, are definitely embracing their curves. They're mm -hmm. sexing it up. You know, they look and feel good about themselves. You know, right. they're wearing the makeup. They're wearing, you know, the the uh, the waist trainers and the body suits and showing cleavage and embracing, you know, their sexuality, which is a it's which is an amazing thing. And models like Ashley Graham, who's a full figured plus size supermodel, has really made an impact on millennials because she's you know all over the place. You know, America's Next Top Model. She's seen in so many different ads, and she's a full-figured model, and she's embracing her curves. So there definitely is um, a role model. Even like with Lane Bryant, you see uh, in stores like Ashley Stewart, you see um, a lot of the ads now featuring women of all colors, all and shapes and sizes, you know, and they're embracing their curves. They're wearing the underwear. You know, they're looking like, you know, their version of the curvy Victoria's Secret angel. So I believe that it's definitely evolving, and people are definitely recognizing that all body types are beautiful, not just, you know, your size zero and two super skinny, you know, supermodel look. Right. You know, so, it's a, so it's a good we, thing. We're getting there. What do you think, Onika? It's evolving. I'm not sure. I just think that, I don't know. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, <laughs> comment. You know, it was a lot of conversation. <laughs> no, I think, no, you know, because I mean, I mean, you have millennials, you know. So what do you think? Do you think they are more embracing of their body than? Than we were. Okay. Definitely. Than we were. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's it. It's just. Absolutely. They, they're, they're, they're embracing everything. Mm -hmm. They are the activists for the pen. <laughs> this pen has rights, and we're going to stand right. up. Exactly. You know what I'm trying to say? It, it's, a, it's a very protest, speak out, we mm -hmm. have this voice, we have social media, we get to say everything, no makeup, makeup. They, get, right. they, they just get that's to do true. everything, and that's, that's fine. True. But the, do you think that progress is, is a straight line, or do you think we can fall back if we start not? I don't think that we will fall you know? back. I, th I think that what's happening is everything is at the forefront. Once you start talking right. about it, anything that you can confront, you can change, and now they're confronting it. Before, you know, heavier girls just wore big clothes they weren't mm -hmm. able to right. um they had okay. to go to the ashley stewart's and and now it's it's everyone's wearing tight voluptuous sexy stuff it's okay. just totally different and i think sex appeal goes across the gamut at this point it's it's from size two to 20. right yes and i agree and i and think it's that's fine a good thing. and i think that that was not the case before right now that, i think it is that yeah women are direction. definitely embracing yeah. their curves mm -hmm, of all shapes mm -hmm. and sizes and the one the great thing about millennials is you know they aren't going to just stand for body shaming you know they definitely have a cause and they have a voice and um they're going to speak out about it you know if they feel that you know they're being disrespected that's or targeted so or you know antagonized mm -hmm. in any way shape or form so that's so it's a good right. thing Going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Have you guys ever heard of a happy wife, happy life? 
Yes. I have. Yes. I say yes. it all the time. I say that all the time, right? So it's a study. Rutgers University. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, to Deborah Carr and Vicki uh, Freeman, two principal authors for a study that came out of Rutgers University, mm -hmm. uh, are talking about the tr that that's the truth. A happy wife is a happy life. So it doesn't matter if the husband is not as happy as the wife <laughs> is. If the wife okay. is happy, she makes the husband happier because she adds stuff to her. You know, he, she cooks more. Okay. She cleans more. She, you know, gives up the little cookie more. And, you okay. know, men are really okay. simple. So, that's like a... That's like a, a Not all men, thing. but... No, a lot of men are simple. Well, heterosexual men are simple. Well, they say, feed me and... Um, the three Fs. Mm, yeah. Feed me. F me. me. And then what else? What's the other one? Feed. Shut the F up? <laughs> Have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> finance. Feed me. Finance. Feed me finance. Finance. No, finance. not the men. It's on the women's side. So, Man, so, the, what? so remember the woman. <laughs> so, so remember the woman from last week, the bachelorette, the new lawyer, yes. Rachel Lindsay. Yes. Right? So, what do you guys think about that? Remember, she had that old generic list, and she was like, "Oh, he has to have a nice smile and want a baby, and that's my list." Remember? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> So you as a hard guy, mm -hmm. right? What do you think that a millennial, right? Think about millennials. What, what you are you a millennial? No, not quite. Right, okay. So think about the millennial and the millennial mindset. What would they want to have a a, a relationship and then something that a relationship oh. with longevity, not a relationship because they they Netflix and chill all day. Right. Oh exactly. my God! I'm Just talking about a real relationship, long like an old lady and an old man. No, I could. I mean, a lot of my friends are millennials, mm -hmm. and so. I think this woman is very superficial. I, I don't use a reality TV star as a standard. I just don't. Right. So I think she's, you know, she's doing that because, you know, she's on TV and, you she know, she's, say she's, something. Yeah, right. she's working at a certain level. I think that millennials are benefiting from looking deeper. You said that they're activists. They are activists. Yes. They've seen the mistakes that previous generations have made. They're not willing to settle as much. Right. So you see the Netflix and chill, but that's just because they're like, we know what it is. We're dealing with it at a certain level. But when I'm ready to get serious, I'm not going to be doing this. Do you think so, they want to get serious, though? I think like, that's really a conversation. Eventually. I don't yes. I see it. I see everything very uh, superficial and random as it relates to the millennials. I don't, it's I don't the guys. Think... No one is, like, really talking about marriage. That's not like, true. But, that's you not... know, like, again, remember, millennials are still very young, right? right. So it's like, what? The 18 like, to 30. 18 to, well, like, maybe like 32, 33. How mm -hmm. many 20-somethings do you know were really thinking about getting married? But we so were. Think, In my generation, we were. Different generation. Like, mm -hmm. I don't feel like, I mean, some of my friends were and some of my friends weren't. So I can't even mm -hmm. say that. That's, like, too broad a brush. But... I do think that once they get older, like the older ones, the 30 right. somethings, I, they are definitely thinking about, I want to be married. I'm thinking about a person who has this, this, and this. Right. They're not willing to settle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I think that Rachel Lindsay is just. Yeah, mm. and you I know, think that the millennials the are doing it in a, a, a more in a uh, an orderly fashion. It's like, okay, let's you know go to school or you know develop our careers, you know, get in the relationship, get married, have the baby. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's not just like you're saying it just mm -hmm. isn't as random um, because they see you know maybe some of the mistakes or you know maybe the single parents have went through or their grandparents have went through and they try not to make those mistakes. I, That's what I find I, more so with the millennials today. I totally not do not see that when I'm looking on social media. What I see is these. Fabulous baby showers yes. <laughs> that look like uh, they just dropped out of Caesar's like palace. Weddings and prom, right? oh and I don't see the wedding. I just see these fabulous oh ass baby God. showers. Is no, what I see, and those no. are millennials that are having those babies. And I don't see a husband there. I see a baby's That's father. Not true. That's exactly what I'm seeing. Like, I'm, I'm just several telling you. of my millennial friends are married already, and they're only in their early 30s. So it's like it really oh, depends. Yes. I'm just it, saying what I it see. It depends. You know what I'm saying? It all depends. I think on the yeah. mindset of the millennial. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, and again, I feel like that, that whole thing of not settling, like, you know, because they say, oh, you know, millennials have a sense of entitlement. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that's too harsh. I don't think, I don't think, I think it's harsh. I think it's with no trust. I think, <laughs> I think it's a little bit harsh, but because they might feel like, you know what, you know, my parents have told me I'm special my whole life. Right. I deserve the best. They're looking for the best. They're not just going to be like, okay, let me just. They're not with, struggling. That's. Be they're, with just anybody. They're not going to struggle. They're they like, have a standard. They're like, I, well, if you if you go into a job that you like don't like, mom, why should I? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, what? Are you kidding me? <laughs> that, that's that's the mindset. Uh, that's the mindset. Listen. Okay. Listen. All right. Hey, going out like that? Yeah. Why? 
Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing on trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Well, you know, it was bound to happen. We having an episode where we're talking about Donald Trump. I'm a mole. Oh <laughs> so my name is big. <laughs> <laughs> just over here. So, you know, Mr. Trump, <laughs> I know she's been beefing with you for a couple years now, but now you're the president. No. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm going to keep beefing with you, Mr. Trump. Okay, so you know the Trump administration really going hard on yes. immigrants, really hard um, between the new, what people are calling the new Muslim ban and also like speeding up deportations of people with, you know, Supposedly with criminal records, but sweeping up a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. um, so we have some help for you from the ACLU and other legal organizations in case you find yourself in this situation. Mm -hmm. So if ICE comes knocking at your door, rule number one, do not open your door. Wait a minute. Really, don't. Wait. Don't do it. Okay, don't open your door. I will say that. No, seriously. ICE cannot come in unless they have a signed warrant from a criminal court judge, so that's really important. A lot of people, they get frightened. They don't know, they're like, oh my God, this person is official, I have to open the door, and then these people come in, and then they take them out. Right. So you don't want that, you want to keep the door closed. Uh, remain silent. Can they also. pull them off the street? I mean, that's a little different. Yeah, they can, okay. unfortunately. That, okay. um, so that's why there was you know, a lot of talk here in Brooklyn where people were really frightened. They were hearing that there were sweeps at certain stores mm -hmm. where you know Caribbean immigrants hang out, mm -hmm. um, certain like streets. Like which stores? Like Rainbow? No, Bobby's. Oh, Bobby's. Bobby's is huge. You know it's going to pull it out of you. But Bobby's. <laughs> Bobby's. But you know, I mean, you tell, I, can't, you don't, you tell. Tell me, I can't go to Bobby's. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't go to Bobby's now. Okay, sorry. The so thing is, I don't, we don't know if that's true. It might be just rumor, but there are pe people were definitely hearing it. And so they were, it was affecting the way that they moved around. Wow. So that's it's, it's really, it is. It's, yeah, it is. It's really it's frightening. Cool. It's very frightening. And so rule number two, remain silent. It's crucial to remain silent because anything you say can and will be held against you. That is true. So you don't have to say anything. You don't have to talk about what your status. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Wait until you get a lawyer present with you. Do not sign anything. That's rule number three. Not anything ICE gives you without an advice of an attorney present. So can again, I, always have an attorney present. Can I interject for one second? I just sure. have one question. So they will still give you... Uh, a lawyer, assign you a lawyer if you cannot afford yeah, you one. one. Yeah. Even if you're not a legal citizen here, they you still, have you have to you, you still have to have okay. legal representation. Okay. Okay. That's, I just want to make sure because people probably don't know that. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. Okay, and that's why they're they're sweeping so many people up because people don't know their rights. Mm -hmm. And number four, fight back, fight back. Don't f be afraid to fight back. Get a trustworthy and competent attorney once again to explore your options and fight your case if detained. You may be able to get bail, so don't give up hope. I remember when, you know, that he did the first Muslim ban and all those people got held up in, in airports and stuff, and you saw the massive the, we, outpouring of yeah. support and lawyers who were not even, like, specializing in immigrant law was just like, we want to help you. Mm -hmm. So there are people here who, who have your back and want to help wow. you. So, mm -hmm. you no, know, definitely. And you could be a this. man now, if you think about it, because if Trevor can't come outside... <laughs> Trevor. We Trevor. have to be together. You know what? <laughs> we don't want to eat your food. Wife, Trevor. <laughs> Trevor. Trevor. Get you a wife, Trevor. Hey, no good. Don't come Settle together. down. Settle down, Trevor. Oh Once you get married, God. they can't kick you out. <laughs> I, I might do it for a couple thousand dollars. How much? Listen. Okay, listen. Ignore this woman. Ignore this woman. Break your last comment, Trevor. <laughs> What's his name, Trevor? Trevor. Okay. Olya, move on to the next story, please. <laughs> hey, you going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? 
<laughs> I see you. Come look at Mr. Feather. Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing. We're just playing. I'm trying to get you out of here. Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Fashion. Oh my gosh, well, fashion. fashion designers are notorious for seeing and incorporating designs, patterns, and mixtures of colors in faraway lands and calling it their own. Uh, recently, Sarah Duoff, a Singlenese designer and founder of the fashion label Tongoro, says that she's a victim of outright theft and is calling out YSL. Really? Which is crazy. Wow. In 2016, Miss Duoff released a baguette-styled handbag and received a call from a friend after seeing uh, Miss Duoff's baguette-styled handbag tagged with YSL label during Paris Fashion Week 2017. Mm -hmm. Um, the photos on screen, the top photo belongs to Miss Duff, which states that her handbag was released in 2016, right. and the lower photos are from the YSL show during Paris Fashion Week, Fashion Week 2017. What has happened, for those who don't understand, it's like working on a project and getting an F and seeing someone else copy you and getting an A-plus for your work, uh, mm. says mm -hmm. OK Africa. Um, it's just really interesting to see how this whole situation will play out, considering that that is one of her signature bags from her line, and now YSL has done the same bag for 2017. And I, and I think they could do. So do you I, think, so this is my question, so do you think that YSL intentionally ripped off Tongoro thinking no one would know, or does someone would forget that they saw this bag in a magazine and the design just mysteriously came to them? So I don't think so. Well, it's a long... Like um, a baguette, baguette. It, but yeah, right, so yeah. it's a long clutch, right? So a clutch like this long. It's you'll beautiful. see, you'll see yeah. the photos. Yeah. But you cannot trademark dimensions, right? So YSL right. could do whatever they want to do as it relates to dimension. Now, if if she had her logo associated with the bag and they did something similar to her logo, then maybe she might have a case. Yeah, but dimensions and, and yeah, colors and stuff like that, you can't. Fabric and things you like that. You can't do that. There's nothing she could do about that. Well, the, in, in her defense, mm, what she's saying is that, that the actual I'm baguette... The baguette. So she can't do anything. She can't say, hey, you knocked off my bag. No, well, Clearly, the, the, she has the, no case no, in what court. She, what she, she would want to do is do a cease and desist letter and make them stop producing the bag. She does not she have. Can't she do can't that. do that. She can't do that. She can't do but, that. But what, in her defense, what I was what I was about to say was that um, the bag, that the signature piece from her collection, represents a part of their culture. So it was significant to her in that way. It wasn't a piece that was just randomly done because she wanted to make this long, elaborate baguette. Right. The baguette um, is significant, and it represents um what um the culture brings you know the, her african mm -hmm. culture um what the bag represents so it all and coincides with, and, and yeah it all coincides with what it represents not necessarily um it being a fashion statement so mm -hmm. you know that's the only thing that maybe she may have a leg to stand to on that but she can't do anything at all you can't you really can't I, I went to work right and i asked the, the trademark people i was out Show wow. them the story. They read the story. It was like, does she have a case? No, absolutely not. No. You cannot trademark dimensions. I just feel like she has to have some recourse. Like, maybe if it gets on social media and enough people are like, you know what? Hey, you know, they YSL stole it from this people and, and they start getting a lot of bad press. They might, they have to shut it down. I doubt it. I doubt it, too. I wouldn't lose my money. I but it is a beautiful don't. bag, though. <laughs> don't doubt the power of social media. Bag. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. <laughs> Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Mm. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. So I'm happy to say that Calypso Queen, Calypso Rose is being honored by <laughs> Trinidadian government in a big way. So according to Caribbean Life News, they are naming one of their state-owned aircraft after Calypso Rose. Oh, nice. Amazing, yes. Mm -hmm. And this honor comes on the heels of winning the World Album of the Year Award, and that's at the Victorie de la Musique Awards in France. So that was, like, amazing. So she's having, like, an amazing year so far. And the third thing is... We just came up off of Carnival, Trinidad Carnival, you know, mm -hmm. love it. And her song, <laughs> jump, and wave, yes. wave. jump and wave, jump and wave. But this time she's not jumping and waving. This time she's like, leave me alone. Yes, that is the name of her song. Um, Calypso Rose had this song called Leave Me Alone, and it really became like an anthem. 
for women on the road to say, you know what, I just want to free up my body and I want to dance by myself. I don't want to necessarily dance with anyone with me and I, you know, I want to be free. Mm -hmm. So this happened, remember last year I was talking about how uh, the Japanese musician got killed yeah, after? Yeah, I remember. Right. This mm -hmm. whole thing came up about, like, after that. So this whole feminist movement about stopping domestic violence and women being protected and this song came. So what do you guys think about the power of music to kind of start a revolution, well, if music, you will? Well, music is definitely empowering. I think it's great that she's expressing herself and having uh, using music as a voice and as a tool to uh, get her point across and get her message across, you know, reach women everywhere, you know, to reach everyone, you know. So it's, it's a good thing. Music is definitely um, inspiring and um, it can definitely ignite um, a movement. Yeah, I, I am. I should I say something? Go ahead. Go ahead. Of uh, so my thought is, uh, when I see like Caribbean dance, right, mm -hmm. and that it just seems like a a fluid, an orchestra of body. Yes, <laughs> and it seems like you want to dance with someone because it's like a hustle. I mean, a hustle will be fast, but just mm -hmm. like a slow moving hustle, and so just doing it by yourself is. Why? Why is that? Why no, is that, that I mean, no. The thing is, with carnival and dancing in general, it's about freedom. Right. So yes, it's about you know what I'm free to dance with who I want to dance with, and it doesn't matter. And I have a boyfriend; it doesn't matter. I'm dancing <laughs> with you or whining with you. That's that's a part of it. And then it's also like you know what I also have a right to just dance by myself, and I can say no if you want to whine on me. And so I say no. Perspective. Right. You know, hands off. It's you know liberating. It's, it's liberating. liberating. It's oh, so definitely liberating. liberating. Okay, I got it. And I mean, now it's like it really is an activist movement. I say womanist, not feminist, because I mm. think feminist has a bad reputation. Um, a lot of them, like there's this woman who won Project One Way 2011. Her name is. Let me see if I can find her name. Um, but anyway, she created a T-shirt that says "Leave Me Alone." leave she alone it became like a thing that people were wearing and carnival and stuff like that so it's really gaining momentum and i hope it goes a long way in mm -hmm. stopping domestic violence and stop blaming the victim for rapes and murders and is that and a big like thing that. in in um trinidad domestic, domestic violence, violence is a problem it's in, definitely in a problem yes is it, it a is. cultural thing is it i don't know if i mean i don't know if i call it a cultural thing i think and as far as patriarchy mm -hmm. <laughs> exists all over the world you know what I mean? I think they're, it's still something that they're trying to work through. You okay. know? So hopefully okay. this goes a long way in, in fighting that. So yeah. Stand up. That's right. Yes. Jonathan, <laughs> leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> Women's liberation. Yes. <laughs> Don't get too liberal. That's the problem. No, no. <laughs> and on that, like, light, on, on that note, Sorry. that's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the Four that's One. It? You're a smart source for urban lifestyle and entertainment news. Yeah. I am. Who are you? Who are me? And so next time, next time, you can check out our website, www.whatstheforeone.com. Mm -hmm. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Yes. Please check us out, and we may just mention you on our show. Oh, yeah. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean and Courtney Rashawn, thank you for watching What's the 411. We'll see you next time. Who's got the 411? What's 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 the 411?